using the word reasonable, I'm trying to. We're going to try to for this next story. Okay. We learned last night that the Cavaliers offered Chauncey Billups a well below market offer to be their president of basketball operations. Let's bring back Tom here. Uh, given the Cavs history under Dan Gilbert, the owner with this position, if you're a rising candidate, why would you consider going to Cleveland when you are hearing that, you know, the average for this position is around $4 million around the league and, and the offer that Chauncey got was less than $2 million per? I'm not sure why the money really matters here. I mean, it's supposed to matter, but in this case, Chauncey's made a boatload of dough. I would think he'd be more interested in the right fit and the opportunity to succeed. He's never done this job. He's a rookie GM. If you look at other rookie comparable general managers or presidents of basketball, whatever you want to call them, the number is actually way below two million. Most come in closer to a million. So I think he's getting double the money here as an offer of what a normal person should get. Now, he's not a normal person. He's Mr. Big Shot. He's a big time brand in and of himself. And he's sitting at ESPN where he's doing a phenomenal job on the air and presumably can continue to do that. So I think for him, it's more about the right fit for the long term. If he really wants to do this job, you, see, I, you know, it shouldn't come down to the money. It should come down more to the opportunity. To your point on that graphic, seems to be we cycle through quite a few people at this organization uh, rather than having stability and long term opportunity to make your imprint for the next five, ten years. So it's curious to me the way this news broke. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see what happens. There's only really three weeks where you need somebody at the helm making these decisions. And we just passed two of them with the draft and with free agency. So it may be a while before there's somebody in Cleveland. Brian, you want to weigh in on something like this, considering, like, you know, what this position is and what Griffin did previously in trying to balance this position? Well, Tom brings up a lot of good points. I mean, we have to remember who we're talking about here with Dan Gilbert. He doesn't value this position. He doesn't value this position. So if Chauncey's going in looking for $4 million, which I understand why he would want that. Like, Tom's right about what entry-level GM salaries are, and some people look at Palenka and go, well, wait a minute, how come he's making all this money with the Lakers? Well, there's another concept of it that, he, well, he's been in the league. He's been an agent. He's been part of this thing for a really long time, and Charles has come from the outside. But you know, I remember when Mark Jackson wanted a head coaching gig. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, why don't you become an assistant? Mark Jackson's like, because I'm Mark Jackson. I don't need to wait around. And guess what? He didn't, he didn't have to. He ended up getting the head coaching gig. Jason Kidd got a head coaching gig right away. Some of these guys that are such, such big-name players – but why would I have to wait and be an assistant GM or take less money than anybody else? I don't need to do that. Let me start the ticker at an even higher number. The problem is, is Chauncey may be trying to do it with one of the cheapest owners when it comes to this position, which is so ironic because the <laughs> last thing you could ever call Gilbert is cheap. Gilbert has been the furthest thing from cheap as an owner his entire time in Cleveland. He just doesn't think the GM should make that much money. He hasn't re-signed any of them. It's fascinating, too, because the GM is going to be pivotal, pivotal in the next year with the idea of LeBron potentially leading. But I yeah. do think the biggest thing that we learned from that story, and I talked to some sources yesterday about this, the idea that once Billups turned it down, we all just go, oh, LeBron's out of here. You know, he had talked to Chauncey. Chauncey's like, all right, and that's just not, that's just not true. That, that conversation did not happen, according to multiple people that I talked to, and then Chauncey even backed that up in his piece with uh, – was it the undefeated? Yeah. Where yeah, it came out last night. So there you well, go. Well, I think it's also interesting how much of that determined also Chauncey's decision, thinking that potentially LeBron may not stay. Mm. Right. right. Yeah, I, I don't think that happened. Though. No, friends with Tyler. Right. Yeah. Right. People thought LeBron was leaving before the whole exactly. Chauncey thing. So. Yeah, I mean that's that's the other thing. If you're Chauncey, you're like, wait a minute, you just gave Ty Lue like seven million and he hadn't been a coach before, and it's just, I mean, we don't have to actually dig that deep. Gilbert's yeah. not going to pay the GM a lot, and I could totally understand why Chauncey would want to get paid because he's Chauncey Billups.